Well, well, we got a really clunky problem ahead of us. Um, the statement reads, for part A, show that any divergent list field, vector field, F, can be written as the curl of a vector potential A. What you will have to do is find AX, AY, and AZ such that we have the curls equal, meaning that we have partial AZ with respect to Y minus partial AY with respect to Z is equal to the uh, X component of the field itself. All right. You may have remembered we did this with the uh, gradient and uh, backtracking to constant functions, things of that nature, since we know that um, these integral theorems play with one another. Uh, so anyways, fast forwarding, you have an FY component and an FZ component that need to be equated to partials of uh, A and their components respectively. So one way to do it is to pick AX equal to zero and solve equations two and three for AY and AZ and then back substitute. We kind of saw that when we were finding constant functions um, before. Um, so note that um, the constants of integrations are themselves functions of Y and Z in this case. They're constant only with respect to X. So now we need to plug these expressions into uh, equation one and use the fact that uh, f is divergent list to obtain ay equals this integral expression, az equals that integral expression. Um, and then for part b, by direct differentiation, check that a, that the a you obtain in part a satisfies del cross a equal f, or the curl of a equals the force field, or force vector field that we saw earlier, not necessarily a force, but a field. Is A divergentless? This was a very asymmetrical construction, and it would be surprising if it were, although we know that there exists a vector field whose curl is F and whose divergence is zero. So you can't say in general is what they're saying. Uh, and for part C, as an example, let F equal Y, Z, X. Calculate A and confirm that the curl of A is equal to F. This is a really clunky problem, so hang in there with me. All right, so for part A, if we let AX equal zero, then two and three are written as um, their respective curl components. But since AX equals zero, the AX derivatives go to zero because derivative of zero is zero. Nothing new there. So when we're solving this differential equation, we integrate both sides and we see that AZ as a function of XYZ is equal to this negative uh, integral um, which will come into play later. Same thing for AY. Now, we know that these satisfy equations 2 and 3. Clearly, we could plug it in and verify if need to. But, uh, again, for any of the constant terms, since they are constant, um, it would remain to find these functions so that it satisfies equation 1, though. And if we recall, equation 1 was partial Y of AZ minus partial Z of AY is equal to the field component, the X field component. So if we plug the A and Y integrals that the AZ and AY in terms of their integrals into this equation one, here's what we get. So we see we have negative integral D uh, partial Y of the FY component with respect to DX prime plus the partial of its constant with respect to Y. And then for the second partial, we have uh, the z partial of the z component of the field, again, with respect to dx prime, minus the partial of c2 with respect to z, and all of this equals the x component. Here's where we get some hindsight and some uh, clever usage of our context. We know that um, this is divergentless, right? Because the divergence of a curl is zero, things of that nature. Um, so what we can say here is that if we break this out in a component form, d by dx of f of x plus d by dy of f of y plus d by dz of f of z is equal to zero. Therefore, d by dx of f of x is equal to, just by algebraically solving and pushing those other two y and z terms over, the negatives. Lo and behold, we can substitute that in for this integral. 
Okay, so we had the negative f uh, y, uh, negative partial y of f y, negative partial z of f of z in the integrals before. So if we integrate this uh, expression to the right of the divergent list or divergence equals zero, we can substitute that into the integral equation. That's fascinating. And we know that by the fundamental theorem, this integral is now equal to f of x of x, y, z minus f of x of zero y, z because we have to evaluate it at the endpoints. And then the f of x of x, y, z on either side cancel, leaving us with uh, partial y of c1 minus partial z of c2 equals f of z, f of x at zero and y and z. That is pretty dang cool. All right, so since these are constant, let's just let c2 equal zero. And then c1 is, uh, the, we take the integral of both sides. So we get zero to y of f of x equal, of f of x of zero y prime z dy prime, and we're done. We show that if ax equals zero, ay equals this integral, and az equals this integral. That is fascinating. Who would have thought? Okay. Now for some a little more concrete work. Uh, B, the curl is thus, uh, curl of A is equal to F. All right, fair enough. So here's how we write up the curl. Again, we can get that from the determinant. Um, and if we substitute in the results of AZ, AY, and AX, this is what we can chug in. For the X component, we know that D by dy of az is equal to um, this f of x minus integral term, and then minus ay uh, with uh, partial of ay with respect to z is equal to the second integral term. And then, of course, since ax equals zero, the y component is pretty simple to find, and then uh, the y hat component and, uh, and the z hat component for that fact. All right, so all we're focusing on is this x hat component. Again, since we're divergent list, we can use the same trick we just saw and put the, ne the negative integral functions, uh, substitute that in for the x component, meaning f of x over dx. And then again, using the fundamental theorem, we see that the initial points cancel, leaving us with f of x in the x hat, f of y in the y hat, and f of z in the z hat. Thus, indeed, the curl of a is equal to f. Fascinating. But we're not done yet. We also know that we have to check and see if A is divergentless. And in general, we can't say that because of these integral expressions we have. Even if AX equals zero, we still have three integrals to evaluate because of how we set it up. So we can't say that it's equal to zero in general. Although sometimes these things might cancel, we don't know. All right, so moving on to part C, a solid example. If F equal Y, Z, X, then AX equals zero would yield AY equal the integral from zero to X, X prime DX, okay? And that would equal to X squared over two. AZ would be this double integral, or the two integrals, not a double integral. Um, again, evaluating them yields Y squared over two minus ZX. So putting that in the vector form, the vector uh, potential here is equal to zero x squared over 2, and y squared over 2 minus zx. To check this, take the curl again. We verify that the partials cancel correctly, and we are indeed left with the field we started with. Wow, that was a mess.